This is VOA News. I'm Joe Ramsey. Injured people were brought to hospitals Monday following an earthquake in Indonesia which toppled buildings and walls. A strong shallow quake on Indonesia's densely populated main island killed at least 162 people and injured hundreds of others as residents fled into the street, some covered in blood and debris. The toll is expected to rise further, but no estimates were immediately available because of the area's far-flung rural population. Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky said on Monday Russia must stop shelling the Zaporizhia nuclear power plant after it was rocked by shelling on Sunday. Quote, the demilitarization of the Zaporizhia nuclear power plant is extremely important. Russia must withdraw all its fighters from there, Zelensky said during his daily address on Monday. The shelling drew condemnation from the International Atomic Energy Agency, which said such attacks reached a major disaster, although the U.N. Atomic Watchdog later confirmed there were no immediate nuclear safety or security confirms. Russia and Ukraine on Monday traded blame for at least a dozen explosions at the plant. Ukrainian authorities are evacuating civilians from liberated areas in the southern Kherson and Mykolaiv regions. They fear that infrastructure damage is too severe for people to endure the winter without power, heat, and water. The World Health Organization warned that millions in Ukraine face a quote-unquote life-threatening winter. Find more on our website, voanews.com, or follow us on the VOA mobile app. This is VOA News. The U.N. Security Council held an emergency meeting Monday in New York to discuss North Korea's latest intercontinental ballistic launch at Japan's request. The United States and other countries condemned the launch and called on North Korea to abandon its weapons programs. The DPRK continues to not respond and instead chooses to continue its reckless behavior. The council must instead respond. North Korea fired a missile last week that landed near Japanese waters in its second major weapons test this month that showed a potential ability to launch nuclear strikes on all of the U.S. mainland. Mali's junta announced on Monday a ban on the activities of NGOs funded or supported by France, including humanitarian groups amid a worsening row between Paris and Bamako. The West African nation's interim prime minister justified the move in a statement on social media, calling it a response to France's recent halt to development aid for Mali. The French foreign ministry said last week it had made the decision, which came three months after finalizing its pullout of anti-jihadist forces from the country over Bamako's alleged use of paramilitaries from Russian group Wagner. New Zealand's Supreme Court has ruled the country's 18-year-old voting age discriminates against people 16 years and older. And now Parliament is considering the issue. VOA's Jeff Custer reports. The issue of 16-year-olds voting was brought to the court by an advocacy group, which argued at 16, a New Zealand citizen can already drive, work full-time, and pay taxes. So why not vote? The Supreme Court apparently supported that argument, as does Prime Minister Jacinda Ardern. But she told a news conference Monday she cannot simply make the measure law. Given this question is a matter of electoral law and requires a super majority or 75% of the House to change the law as it stands, it should not just be a matter for consideration of the government of the day, but for the parliament as a whole. Ardern said the vote would likely occur in the coming months, but any change in the voting age would not take effect until after next year's general election. Jeff Custer, VOA News, Washington. The Colombian government and the South American country's largest remaining guerrilla group have resumed peace negotiations, breaking a roughly four-year hiatus during which the rebels have expanded the territory where they operate. Neighboring Venezuela on Monday hosted representatives of the National Liberation Army and the government of Colombian President Gustavo Petro. The discussions come more than a month after the rebels announced resumption of negotiation. I'm Joe Ramsey. This is VOA News. Reporting via remote, I'm Jeff Custer. 
Officials in Ukraine say rolling blackouts across the country could continue through March. The warning comes as Ukrainians brace for an extremely grim winter after weeks of relentless Russian strikes against its power grid. One energy official said Tuesday, or Tuesday described the power grid damage as colossal. Ukrainians are being told to stock up on warm clothes, blankets, and anything that might help, or even evacuate the worst areas or possibly leave the country. The World Health Organization, meanwhile, is warning that millions in Ukraine face life-threatening a life-threatening winter. Speaking late Monday, the WHO's European Regional Director Hans Klug told reporters, put simply, this winter will be about survival, with Ukrainians facing unique health challenges. It's vital for the U.S. to have... This week, the war enters its ninth month, and already some 10 million people are at risk of mental disorders such as acute stress, anxiety, depression, substance use, and post-traumatic stress disorder. Klug said the WHO has recorded more than 700 attacks on Ukraine's health facilities since Russia's invasion began in February. He called it a clear breach of international humanitarian law. Ukraine's security services said Tuesday they have carried out a raid on a historic Orthodox monastery in Kyiv in order to counter suspected subversive activities by Russian special services. The raid took place at the Kyiv Perchis Lavra Monastery. The Ukrainian secu uh, security service statement said the action was aimed at preventing the monastery from being used to shelter sabotage and reconnaissance groups, foreign citizens, or weapons storage. The Russian Orthodox Church and the Kremlin condemned the raid. This is VOA News. U.S. Secretary of State Antony Blinken Tuesday criticized the decision by soccer's international governing organization, FIFA, to threaten players at the World Cup with yellow cards if they wear armbands supporting inclusion and diversity. The captains, the captains of several European teams had planned to wear One Love campaign anti-discrimination bands during the World Cup soccer tournament matches. The conservative World Cup host country Qatar, Qatar has many strict laws, including one that outlaws homosexuality. Blinken said it was always concerning when we see any restrictions on freedom of expression. Blinken added it's especially so when expression is for diversity or inclusion. Blinken made the comments at a Doha news conference alongside his Qatari counterpart, Foreign Minister Sheikh Mohammed bin Abdurrahman Al Thani. The Foreign Minister said despite their differences, the Qatar-U.S. relationship is important for both nations. It's vital for the U.S. to have a partner like Qatar in this region. It's vital for us globally to have a partner like the U.S. And I've been saying this repeatedly, Qatar-U.S. partnership is actually the most important international relationship that Qatar has on the international sea beyond our region. So this is something that uh, we are committed to pursue together with my colleague, Tori, uh, uh, to continue pursuing this with also the future administration. The UN Human Rights Office Tuesday denounced Iran's increasingly harsh and deadly crackdown on mass protests that have been rocking the country for more than two months. The ongoing nationwide protests in Iran began in response to the September 16th death of 22-year-old Iranian Masi Amini while in police custody. Iran's morality police arrested Amani uh, days earlier for allegedly not covering her hair fully enough with a hijab. As the protests have broadened to a general protest against Iran's strict Muslim theocracy, the reaction from Iran's security forces has been more and more harsh. At a Geneva news conference, UN High Commissioner on Human Rights spokesman Jeremy Lawrence said at least 300 people have been killed since the protests began, including 40 children. He said the lack of accountability for gross human rights violations in Iran remains persistent. Of particular concern is the authorities' apparent refusal to release the bodies of those killed to their families or making the release of their bodies conditional on the families not speaking to the media or agreeing to give a false narrative on the cause of death. The Human Rights Office urged Iranian authorities to address the people's demands for equality, dignity and rights instead of using unnecessary or disproportionate force to suppress the protests. More information on this story and all the stories we're covering can be found on our website, voanews.com. Reporting via remote, I'm Jeff Custer. This. This is VOA News via remote. I'm Diane Roberts.
Multiple explosions have been heard in Kyiv after air raid sirens sounded in Ukraine's capital and elsewhere across the country. AP correspondent Charles de la Desma has our story. The thunderous echoes of what sounded like repeated blasts have rattled across the capital. Mayor Vitaly Klitschko posted on Telegram that one of the capital's infrastructure facilities has been hit. He urged people to stay in shelters. The air alert continues. Klitschko didn't give further details and there was no further information on whether and what targets may have been hit. Russia's been repeatedly pounding Ukraine's wartime capital and power facilities across the country in recent weeks, causing widespread blackouts. I'm Charles Duladesma. Russian rockets slammed into the maternity ward of a hospital overnight in southern Ukraine, killing a newborn, the regional governor said Wednesday morning. It happened in Vilyansk, a small city located in the Ukrainian-held north of the Zaporizhia region. The Ukrainian emergency services later reported that a woman in labor and a doctor had been rescued from the ruined building. The European Parliament on Wednesday voted on a resolution labeling Russia as a state sponsor of terrorism for its invasion of and actions in Ukraine. We move uh, uh, on the resolution on recognizing the Russian Federation as a state sponsor of terrorism. There is a joint motion for a resolution tabled by three groups. We vote first on paragraph one, original text by Roko. Vote is open. The 27-nation EU has condemned in the harshest terms the invasion and repeatedly said that several Russian actions over the past 10 months have amounted to war crimes. For more on these and other stories, please visit us at voanews.com. This is VOA News. Search and rescue operations are still underway at this hour for victims of the devastating earthquake in western Indonesia. Local officials said Tuesday more than 268 people have died while 151 others are still missing. The 5.6 magnitude quake hit Indonesia's West Java province Monday. Police confirm six people died during a shooting at a Walmart in the U.S. state of Virginia Tuesday night. Several others are wounded. Officers responding to a report of a shooting in Chesapeake, Virginia, found several victims as they swept through the store over the course of about 40 minutes, according to local authorities. It was the second high-profile shooting in a handful of days. A person opened fire at a gay nightclub in the U.S. state of Colorado late Saturday, killing five people and wounding 17. That person, in the suspect in that case, is scheduled to make a first court appearance on Wednesday. AP correspondent Donna Warder has more on that. 22-year-old Anderson Lee Aldrich is scheduled to appear in court by video from jail. According to court filings by Aldrich's defense team, Aldrich is non-binary and uses the pronouns they and them. Aldrich was beaten into submission by patrons during Saturday night's shooting at Club Q. Investigators say the motive behind the shooting is still unclear, but Aldrich faces possible murder and hate crimes charges. I'm Donna Warder. A brawl broke out in Sierra Leone's parliament Wednesday as MPs debated a proposed change to the electoral system to allow for proportional representation in next year's election, local media reported. In video footage, representatives from the ruling Sierra Leone People's Party and the opposition All People's Congress Party can be seen swinging punches and throwing chairs. At one point, what appears to be a large ornamental vase is tossed across the chamber and back. Following the fight, some MPs were thrown out of the chamber by security, a local journalist who was present told AFP. King Charles III has welcomed South African President Cyril Ramaphosa to, Ramaphosa to London for the first state visit of his reign. It includes a formal banquet as well as talks with government leaders focused on investment and green energy. Charles and Camilla, the Queen Consort, greeted Ramaphosa during a ceremony on a horse guards parade near Buckingham Palace. William and Kate, the Prince and Princess of Wales, also attended. The visit was organized before the death in September of Queen Elizabeth II, a nod to her longtime devotion to the Commonwealth. The last state visit by a South African leader was in 1996 when Nelson Mandela was honored. Via remote, I'm Diane Roberts, VOA News.